The meeting scheduling space has become quite stagnant over the years and honestly quite boring, but something has changed and it's piqued our interest. Whether you're one person looking for the best scheduler or you're a team with complex scheduling needs, this video will tell you exactly what you need to know about the scheduling space and which tool is right for you. This one new tool has come on the market and it's making scheduling interesting again. And we see it saving businesses hundreds of thousands of dollars in admin costs. Now, before I tell you about the scheduling app that is dominating, I wanna to speak to those of you that have super basic scheduling needs. If you are an individual or a super small team and you have less than five meetings a week and you're just looking for a super basic link to send off to someone so they can book a time with you, then you're probably going to be tempted to use something like Google's scheduler, which is free. And look, while it's totally functional and will get the job done, check with your existing software subscriptions to see if they already have a meeting scheduler built in as a feature. So we fit into this camp. Here at Efficient App, we are a small team and we are using Motion as our project management tool that has a scheduler baked in. For context, we have one to maybe four meetings a week and we just need a link that will check mine and Alex's calendar if someone wants to book in with us together. And then we also have our personal booking links. But would we say that Motion is the best meeting scheduler out there? No. The reason is there are tools that are built as dedicated meeting schedulers and they are the ones that are gonna be the best. So if you have a business that does a lot of scheduling, you are going to need something more advanced. You are going to need a dedicated meeting scheduler. Dedicated meeting schedulers can do things like take payments, handle complex scheduling workflows and deep automation, and have a robust API that will allow you to integrate with third-party tools. Now we're gonna go into some deeper examples of what some of these things mean in just a second. Okay, so which tool do we recommend? Which tool is making scheduling interesting again? I almost feel like you're campaigning right now. I am campaigning. My message is simple. My message is this. Shut up and take my money. Cal.com is truly the most impressive, flexible, and modern meeting scheduler on the market. And what we love about them is that they have really taken the time to listen to the needs of businesses and bundle them up into a great user experience. But if you want to get into the nitty gritty of why it's better than Calendly and all the other schedulers, then come along with me. So on the surface, Cal.com and Calendly seem like they have a lot of the same features, but if you look under the hood, you will see how much further Cal.com goes and how much better they are. So let's go through the four main areas that we wanna highlight. Starting with just looking at the most basic free plan for individuals, if you look at Calendly's free plan, they offer one event type and they have limitations. You can't take payments on the free tier. However, when you look at Cal.com, they offer unlimited event types and you can integrate Stripe right on the free plan. So if you're an individual that is just looking for a dedicated meeting scheduler, there's no question Cal.com is the winner here. And they are also better than that Google scheduler app that I was talking about earlier. Google's probably going to kill it off anyway. True. But where Cal.com really stands out compared to Calendly is their workflows. So think about this workflow for a second. Say you are a construction company and you offer three services, bathroom, kitchen, and outdoor remodeling. Based on what your customer selects that they want done, say bathroom remodeling, you want them booked in with your bathroom specialist. Unless you want an outdoor bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> This straightforward workflow can be achieved with both Calendly and Cal.com, but Cal.com can take it to another level. So let me give you a practical example using Cal.com. Say someone selects that they're interested in renovating their bathroom and their budget is between 10 and 20K. Well, you can send them through your typical sales process, but watch what happens when somebody says that they're interested in their bathroom and their kitchen and they have a higher budget. You can direct them to say a premium sales process. You can send them down a different route. And finally, say somebody just selects that they're interested in a specific service like interior design, you can set up an entirely different route for that. Now with Calendly on the surface, it might seem similar, but Calendly doesn't allow for multi-select fields. So you end up being forced to send someone just down one path, depending on what they select. Another example, say you have three different sales reps. One of them is available one day a week and the others work four days a week. Now, if you're scheduling leads with them, you ideally would want the person that can only take calls one day a week to get assigned less calls, right? 
In scenarios like this, Calendly doesn't handle this weighted round robin. That's what this type of automation is called. On the other hand, Cal.com will allow you to assign weight to different team members depending on availability, skill set, and even performance. Now, this is a super complex workflow that Cal.com can handle which is impressive. Not to mention when you're in the back end of Calendly versus Cal.com, Calendly feels a lot more dated and like it was built a long time ago, while Cal.com's whole user experience and interface is so much more enjoyable to use. So do you think I'm done with examples? Nope, I have one more. When taking a look at basic email automation and SMS reminders, Cal.com and Calendly both do that. However, Cal.com goes so much deeper because they also allow you to automate follow-ups after the meeting. You can set up follow-up email sequences within Cal.com and you can even customize them based on how the meeting went. Calendly and Cal.com may seem like they're similar, but once you go in deeper, you're starting to see now how different they actually are. I'm telling you, Cal.com destroys Calendly. Yeah, but how much are they paying you? They're not paying me. I'll tell you a story. This is ad lib. First of all, Cal.com was introduced to me by Alex. And I said, what's this? It's a new tool. Fine, I'll do it. I wasn't excited about it. And then I logged in and then I was able to see how crazy it is. We were an integration business and we had to build so many custom scheduling integrations and automations for our clients. And I thought, oh my God, if we were still running that business, we'd be out of a business because Cal.com has solved that problem. This is not in the script, but because you've asked. Yeah, but how much are they paying you? And look, it's not just us who feel this way. Cal.com is making a lot of people rethink how they see the scheduling space. So there's one more thing that makes Cal.com different, and that is the fact that they are open source software. But I'm going to let Alex explain that one to you. I'm going to grab him while he's making coffee because otherwise he doesn't want to be in these videos. You probably have heard of the term open source, but have no idea what the benefits are. Let me explain. Okay, so open source software is kind of like an open concept kitchen in a restaurant. Anyone can see what the chefs are doing. It's fully transparent. Just like you're watching me make coffee right now, you get to see all of the steps involved. There's no hiding anything. You can literally jump in and see their code. I need to grind these beans real quick. So there's two clear camps in which open source is actually helpful when you're buying a software. So the first camp are people that are maybe looking at Cal.com and saying, well, you're new, Calendly has been around forever. What happens if something happens to Cal? If you're open source software, someone at any time could essentially fork it and create cal2.com. It will be the same thing, but someone else is maintaining it. There's a security in it being an open source project. Okay, so then there's camp two. If you're working in a super sensitive place, like healthcare, government, something of the sort, and the data that you're dealing with can't be seen by anyone else or on anyone else's servers, well, open source means you can literally self-host it on your company's servers. So more and more companies are actually going the open source path because I think we're all realizing, especially with ChatGPT and everything coming out, code is becoming a commodity. So there's really not much more that people need to know about open source. <laughs> All right, so if you're an individual, grab yourself a free Cal.com seat, or if you're a business, grab yourself $500 worth of credit using the link down in the description. Now, I know you still may be wondering, what about the other meeting schedulers out there? Or how do I really know that Cal.com's for me? Well, don't worry, I've got you because we are gonna go through all the other popular meeting schedulers and give you our thoughts on them. There's a tool called TidyCal that often comes up in people's research. And the reason why people like it is because it has a one-time fee of $29 rather than being a subscription. So when Calendly was the only other main competitor on the market, this is why TidyCal was so alluring. And now Cal.com is free and does everything better. Exactly. Wait, I'm, that's my line in a sec. But TidyCal is like shopping at a discount store. You get what you pay for. In general, we don't recommend purchasing software that has a one-time payment, and that's because they tend to lack innovation and support. When you're paying for a subscription, you're paying for a team to update the software and to innovate. So no subscription, no innovation, no bueno. Do you see the problem here? Yes, but I don't want to. You've probably figured it out by now. Everything that TidyCal now does is offered on the free tier of Cal.com. So I'm going to let you do the math on which tool to use. Savvy Cal is like that friendly neighbor that knows your name and will always say hello. Good morning. Morning. Or it could be the creepy neighbor that's using TidyCal. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, and in case I don't see you, good afternoon, good evening, and However, if you need some serious help painting your fence, you probably want to call a professional instead. Savvy Cal is suited for teams who value personalized scheduling and a more fun user experience. For example, instead of somebody selecting a time to meet, like in a time block, they can actually drag a time on your calendar or display their own calendar on top of your calendar as long as they give security permissions. But when looking at their workflows or their API, they are nowhere near as good as Calendly or Cal.com. So if you have these robust scheduling needs, then make sure that this is not the tool that you go for. Savvy Cal is not free. You can't even get one scheduling link. So again, when comparing it with cal.com, weigh out your options there. Unless you try a demo of it and you truly fall in love, then you know which one to use. Then there's Chili Piper, but I'm going to ask the person who actually used Chili Piper to tell you about it. Alex here coming in hot to talk about Chili Piper. <laughs> Can I leave now? <laughs> When it comes to enterprises, you may have heard about Chili Piper because they are targeting enterprises, primarily companies using Salesforce who are trying to optimize their sales and marketing processes. That's exactly what Chili Piper does. So the main perk of Chili Piper is just the deep integration that it has with Salesforce specifically. And while you can do a similar type of integration with Cal.com because they have such a robust API, it may just be a bit more manual and custom when using Cal.com. I know this firsthand because I actually switched from using Calendly way back when over to Chili Piper because I was constantly trying to find the best tool on the market. I guess I loved changing software. I didn't. What became abundantly clear when using Chili Piper was that everything in the app was talking about Salesforce integration and trying to get me to upgrade. And I'm not using Salesforce being a small team. So I didn't feel like they were building for me. We have a full CRM video on that right here. So if you're an enterprise that's using Salesforce, you might want to consider Chili Piper. But if you're an enterprise using any other CRM on the market, then Cal.com is just a better option. Finally, CRMs like Copper and HubSpot have schedulers baked in that you might be tempted to use. Well, we're here to tell you not to do that because they don't have an API. You're not going to be able to do any automation or build custom workflows. Even if you have super basic scheduling needs, like we said, there's better tools. So it's really a dead end, especially if you're a business. Now that you have the best scheduler, you need a calendar to view all of your new meetings in. Because what is a modern scheduler if you have a boring calendar app? So what you need to do is watch this video where we cover all of the hottest calendar apps on the market. Like and subscribe. And hype the video. What hype? What is hype? It's literally the new thing coming. Like and subscribe and hype. Please use your hype on us. You only have three. If it's out. If it's out. Whoop, whoop.